It is 10-11, September the 12th, 2016, and I would call this meeting of the Tennessee Real Estate Appraiser Commission to order. Beginning at my left, Mr. Hall, if you would uh, state your name and where you're from, please. Norman Hall, Brentwood, Tennessee. Mike Tankersley, Lewisburg, Tennessee. Mark Johnstone, Jackson, Tennessee. Rosie Johnson, Paris, Tennessee. Rex Garrison, Gray, Tennessee. Fred McCara, Johnson City, Tennessee. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, we do have uh, enough members to constitute a quorum and conduct business on behalf of the Tennessee Real Estate Appraiser Commission. At this time, uh, I would entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion from uh, Commissioner Tankersley, seconded by Commissioner Johnson. Any discussion? If not, all in favor of the motion to adopt the agenda, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Agenda adopted. The July, for, uh, July the 11th, 2016 minutes have been previously distributed uh, and with the opportunity for the commissioners to review, I would entertain a motion at this time for approval of the 2016 June 11th meetings as presented or as uh, revised, if necessary. So moved. Second. We have a motion to adopt the minutes as is from Commissioner Tankersley, seconded by Commissioner McCara. Any discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, uh, the 2016 July 11th minutes have been approved. We're ready for the report of experience interviews and, uh, and committee recommendations. And we had uh, five applicants. And uh, at this time, I'm going to turn the chair over to Commissioner Johnson so that I can give my reports. OK. Um, Mr. Johnstone interviewed Paul Lyman bus sticker um, at nine o'clock this morning and he was uh, going for registered trainee to certified general uh, yes I had the opportunity to, to interview mr. bus sticker and actually I interviewed him uh, two to three weeks ago in Jackson he had all of his uh, information and testing done and mr. O'Brien had asked could he come to he said you know I'll drive to your office if you'll do, conduct the interview so I can move forward and so he did and I reviewed his his reports they were uh, they were done fine they were and I have no problems with recommending uh, a an upgrade request from trainee to certified general for mr. bus speaker motion need a motion to approve make the motion that we approve second Motion in a second. Um, all those indicate the saying aye. 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 Okay, Mr. Johnstone also interviewed uh, Keith Taylor Fritz um, this morning uh, from trainee to certified general. Yes, I had the opportunity to interview Mr. Fritz this morning. Uh, I was accompanied by Commissioner Garrison and Commissioner Tankersley in that interview process, and upon review of the reports and the interview, uh, I would make a recommendation for approval of the upgrade request from trainee to certified general. We have a motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second, and but I'll indicate by saying aye. Aye. And Mr. Johnstone also interviewed Tabitha Denise Kirk from um, going from trainee to certified residential. Yes, I had the pleasure to meet Ms. Kirk and interview her, and upon review of the reports and the interview, I would recommend approval of the upgrade request from trainee to certified residential. I have a motion? So moved. Second. Indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay, Mr. Garris, Rex Garrison interviewed uh, Joshua Clay Pierce. Um, this morning from you can give that report yes uh, 
I met with uh, Mr. Clay this morning. Uh, I've read through the reports, went through an interview upon reviewing the reports and the interview. I approve uh, um, the upgrade from trainee to license. We have a motion floor for that. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second, and I'll indicate by saying aye. 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 I'm going to turn this back over to Mr. Johnstone. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Commissioner Johnson. Uh, the uh, last experience interview was conducted by Commissioner Tankersley with uh, Timothy Wayne Pennington, trainee number 4944, who is requested an upgrade from trainee to certified residential. Commissioner Tankersley, you are recognized. I had the opportunity to talk with Mr. Pennington today, uh, looked over his reports. We discussed uh, how he went about it. Um, everything is in order, and I would recommend that his upgrade from trainee to certified. We have a, a recommendation from Commissioner Tankersley to approve the upgrade request. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Commissioner McCara has made a motion to approve. No, oh, well, Garrison. Garrison, I'm sorry. Uh, Commissioner Garrison seconded by Commissioner Johnson. Any discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, recommendation approved. That concludes the experience interview portion for the September meeting. Moving to the next item on the agenda is the education report. And at this time, I would like to recognize uh, Dr. McCara. Uh, we had uh, 12 uh, course recommendations and three individual courses. Um, I reviewed them. They were all very good. And I recommend approval of the uh, 12 uh, courses. Uh, by the way, they were all uh, on, uh, excuse me, the 11 of them were, were in classroom uh, uh, courses. Uh, one was online. Uh, they're all for continuing education. And I recommend approval of those cour classroom courses and the individual courses. You've heard the education report and recommendation for approval of the submitted classes. Do we have a motion to that effect? So moved. Commissioner Johnson has made a motion to approve, seconded by Second. Commissioner Garrison. Any discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Um, education report and classes approved. We are ready for the director's report. And at this time, uh, I would like to uh, recognize Ms. Roxana. Lucio, thank you so much. I was not going to attempt that. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, on your iPads, we're on page 19. I have gone ahead and moved up the 2015-2016 fiscal year. Uh, we don't have complete final figures yet, uh, so those uh, expenditures are showing at a total of 438939 with total revenue at seven. Hundred fifty nine thousand five hundred and sixty nine. Next uh, meeting, we'll have those completely finalized, and we'll be able to have a full six years of history above that we can look at. Uh, for the month of July, that's right below. Um, we have a budget of four hundred thirty eight thousand seven hundred dollars. Expenditures for that one month are thirty three thousand five hundred three, and the revenue uh, is better than the expenditures, which is always good. It's at forty three thousand nine hundred ninety five. What I wanted to point out to um, everyone on the board is that starting with this year, the fiscal 2016 through 2017, the finance team is going to be distributing cost backs on a monthly basis. In the past, you've seen kind of an estimate till year end, and then we get it distributed. That same formula that they used um, to end June 2016, we're going to use monthly. So I'll probably have a separate little graph where you can see what the administrative costs and legal costs are going to be on a monthly basis. That'll give us a better view until we get to, to year end. Um, so that's it for the financial piece. I wanted uh, to give everyone an update on the uh, Aero Appraisers event. That is date uh, October 21st, I believe. And at this point, going to the Washington, D.C. event uh, will be myself, Sarah Matthews, the attorney for the board, and Mr. Thomas is also going. Um, the additional member that the board voted is unable to attend. I don't know if the board would like to consider one other person to go or if we leave it with just the three of us. Um, are you wanting us to take action on that? If, if you think that one more person should go, if there's who, anyone. Who are the uh, 
attendees at this time? It is myself, Sarah, and then Mr. Uh, Thomas is the other board member that is going to go. I believe the board had voted in May, if I'm not uh, wrong, on Mr. Walton going, but he's not going to be able to go. What was the date on that again? It's May 21st. It's through the weekend. October. 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 I'm sorry. October 21st through the 24th, I believe. I'm sorry. October. Like Thursday through Monday. Monday. In October. Okay. Well, I'll open up this board discussion. Does any, do y'all think we need to send another attendee at this time, or do you think three would be adequate? Great, and we've made all arrangements, so we'll leave it with that. Do you need a motion to that effect? Or no, we had voted on it beforehand. Uh, we just, because we were down to only one board member going, I thought it was important if the board wanted somebody else to go that you'd have the opportunity. So. Wouldn't, wouldn't hurt anything. I mean, it's up, to, it's up to, I mean, the funding is already there. Is that correct? That is correct. We so had approved for one more, yes. I would suggest we send another. He got their schedule and available that what was the date again i would be unable to attend um thursday the 21st i believe is uh the beginning of the event and i'm doing the same thing and sarah and i are uh both planning on going on that does date. it start the thursday or friday we're traveling late thursday i believe it starts friday the 21st okay i know my schedule is not going to permit uh, october's out for me. Me too. Anybody else who's available? I've got a teaching a class Thursday night. Okay. Thank yeah. That's you. You're the only guy left, man. Yeah, I mean, I would go. Since I opened my mouth, I guess. Uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll be a good representative. And I don't think you would technically have to be there until like noon on Friday if that opens it up for anybody else. I can probably. There's like an event that morning, but it's an optional. Yeah. I could look, see if I could get a flight out Friday morning. Um, why, why don't we do this? Why don't we let uh, Commissioner Tangersley and, and, and Commissioner Garrison get their heads together and see who, who has available time and can make it work and whichever one of you guys we'll, we'll do a battle roll right there and whoever taps out first doesn't get to go uh, i think we can work that okay <laughs> that's fine and that's what we'll document uh, that okay. since mr walton was not able to go that one of the, whosoever calendar it works out with will be who the board is okay with representing us that sounds great and we'll stay on top of that um, next the other item that I had is we want to look at those 2017 board meeting dates so in the email that was sent out last week you all received the possibility um, as Sarah and I discussed it of moving the board meeting to the third Monday instead of the second Monday we were having a conflict with one additional board always meeting that same week uh, the exception would be the January date. January 16th is what we had emailed. And in looking back, uh, we had already set a January 9th meeting date because of the audit. So we want to leave that January 9th date alone. And then the future dates from March all the way through November um, are all the third Monday. If the board is in agreement, we'll block a room and make sure that everything is set up for that Monday. Dates acceptable to the board? Okay, I'd uh, entertain a motion for approval of the scheduled 2017 meeting dates. So moved. Second. I have a motion from Commissioner McCarra, seconded by Commissioner Tankersley, to approve the 2017 meeting schedule. Any discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, 2017 schedule is approved. Thank you very much. Uh, on your iPads, I'm on page 22. Uh, you have before you a letter, and this letter is from Mr. Vernon uh, Stoltz. He is here today. If anyone has not had a chance to read it, I definitely want to give you an opportunity to. Um, he is asking for the commission to consider his situation not having renewed after the 2010 renewal period. If you've got any uh, questions, Sarah can update us on what the board states, um, and I'm sure he'll be able to answer any questions you have. So at this moment, his license has been expired for the last five years, I believe. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Director, do you, 
-hmm. Do we want to, before we go, do we, would we like Ms. Matthews to speak to this request before, whether it's even a legal request and can be done, or would we want to go on and hear the request? She and I talked about it, so she does have the statute. She'll be, well, you know, happy to explain that to you. That way you can just ask any different questions or additional questions, yes. It looks like you all have a rule that says you can grant exceptions to any of the requirements. Um, otherwise, he would have to go back and completely reapply, take the examination. So the request is, a, is a, we do have the ability. You have the authority. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Stoltz, uh, you are recognized. If you'd please... Where would be the best place for him to sit? I think right here. Right there. Okay, if you would sit at this first here and speak directly into the mic, please. If it's working, you might tap it or something. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Um, you've got your let the letter in front of you, had a chance to read that. I hope you have. I'm not going to go through the details of that because I do appreciate the time that you've taken to at least consider this request. Um, upon that, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer those. With me today is Frances Hundley, who is the assessor of Madison County. Uh, she's just decided to come and support me here at this. And um, with that said, I just would like to make a formal request in person to have my license reinstated. Let me ask the board, have y'all all read the letter? Yeah. And everybody, so he does, does he need to go through all of the nuances? Of the, okay, all right. And one thing I will say, uh, Ms. Hunley there, and they're from my home county in Madison County, so I know Ms. Hunley, she's a tax assessor there, and I've known Mr. Stoltz for a long time, and he appraised for a long time in Madison County, who now works for the tax assessor's office. We do not have a licensed appraiser on staff at the tax office now, and I think, in my opinion, and this is just an opinion, it always behooves a county to have a licensed individual there when people are coming in and out asking questions and you're looking at reassessments and so forth. And um, that's all I have to say about it. Questions from the board? I was just wondering if it would be appropriate for uh, any uh, coursework to be taken to get back on your, you know, kind of your feet. If you, look, you, at, if you look at page two of his letter, it does say he's taken some classes within the last nine months. Mm -hmm. the, my fellow commissioners, if you feel that the coursework is, is sufficient. First question is, are those approved by the state of Tennessee for continuing education? We'll check that. They are, excuse me, they are IAAO courses, which are assessing officers. The reason I say that is I think if your license was put into retirement to bring it out, you would have to have kept up. I think that's correct, yes. These, these hours can, you can ask for individual credit where you would submit the... Uh, so we're looking at over 90, we're looking at 105 hours in the last nine months. I, I think that would cover his continuing... I would think so, and, you know, if necessary, what we could do is approve this pending. Yeah, because what we would want you to do is to fill out the application again and then list those courses and we could look through it. I mean, essentially what you all will need to do is, you know, waive any extra requirements on top of, you know, taking the examination again or, you know. Would you have, would you have a recommendation on how that motion would be, should be worded to accommodate that request? Okay. I, it might be that what we're saying is we're willing to waive things like the exam, et cetera, but we do need to review the courses to make sure that uh, I would say would you want to do it upon completed application, review of the coursework taken, um, and then just what you wish to waive from the requirements, which I I think you got that's that. what I'm thinking I would think be appropriate. You put that in the form of the <laughs> uh, I think so that uh, we the the commission recommends approval of this. Um, waiving retaking qualifying exams 
but upon review of coursework to make sure that all the courses you've taken are valid and, and uh, uh, meet. And what about, well what about fees or anything like is it reinstatement he'll probably have to get caught up with the fees for for the amount so we'll make sure to determine that along with the continuing education that that the office can do if, is there a second second okay we have a motion from dr. McCara seconded by uh, Commissioner Garrison is there any uh, discussion Good luck. not all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. Any Thank you very much. Any opposed? Okay, motion approved. Thank you, Mr. Stoltz. Thank you very much. And uh, if there are additional requirements for education, I don't mind making those. That that's not a problem. But I do feel like these are will be approved courses, so we'll go from there. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Take care. All right. So, still under director's report, budget, legislative update, and application reviews is. Anything else? We don't have anything else uh, at this point. The legislative proposal for next year um, was taken into consideration. It's been passed along. So at this point, we don't have anything new to update on that. Uh, Legal is providing every board with an updated spreadsheet to see the status that it's on. So if there's any reason uh, that we need to uh, move it along or update the board, I will make sure to do so. So at this point, um, I will go ahead and turn it over to Legal, I believe. I was going to say one more thing. For the yes. I was just going to say, um, on behalf of the commission, we welcome you and wish you good luck Thank in your you. new position. Thank you very, very much. Great job. <laughs> She's doing a lot to learn. Let me be very honest very with you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Perfect. To speak to the legislation that we were just discussing, um, I did do the AMC work that we had discussed in our last meeting, and it has been to the governor's office and looks good. So if all goes well, I will be up on the hill speaking. <laughs> to the AMC legislation in the coming months. So the ASC has reviewed it where we will now be compliant with all the federal rules. So, okay, legal report. I am on page 24. In here. Norman, I brought your print out so you can use that. Okay, and last time we did this and it was very I thought efficient. I will read the complaint number and give you all a few minutes to read what is out there and then I will give you my recommendation. The first two are representments. Um, the first one I'm not 100% familiar with. I just read through the case file. It was presented by Keeling back in 2015. So it is complaint number 2015-02090091. On this first one, we may be able to speed it along if I just tell you all what happened recently. Um, essentially what happened is in January of 2016, you um, gave the respondent in this case some coursework to take and a civil penalty of $1,000. He paid the civil penalty but did not complete the courses. Um, we called him in July to let him know his 180 days was expiring and he informed us that he did not plan on taking the courses and that he had already surrendered his license with the state. So what it appears happened was he called in and somehow it was missed in our records that he had courses to take and our office let him surrender his license. So he's asking to surrender his license in lieu of taking the courses. He has no license at this point. It's <laughs> gone as of May 17th. So we have no leverage to make him take the courses. So I just need your approval to just take the courses off and just go with the surrender. Maybe it's 
rendered his license, why does he need to take the courses? I, that's sort of like dropping out of college and saying, that's well, our thought, exactly. have an incomplete for a <laughs> class, you know. I mean, when we called him and said, are you going to take these courses? He was like, no. <laughs> he was like, I already surrendered my license. So, and it was a mix up on our end. I think when they looked at the file, they didn't see that he had courses to take and they let him surrender. So normally we would have said, you actually have some coursework to take before, but he has no license now, so. What is our, what, is, what, what are we trying to decide? My, recommend, we accept my recommendation, recommendation is that you accept the voluntary surrender in lieu of the coursework. I move we accept that. We have a motion to accept the voluntary surrender from Dr. McCara, seconded by Commissioner Tanksley. Any discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Uh, case 2016-021-231. We had this one at our last meeting in July. Um, you all recommended that the respondent take, I believe it was 30 hours of courses, so two 15-hour courses. Um, after I sent the consent order, the respondent informed me that this appraisal had taken place in 2014 and he had taken these exact courses in November of 2015. So it is my recommendation that we only do the letter of warning and drop the courses because I think it's a little overburdensome to require him to take the courses again since he just took them. He, he appeared to understand where he had violated. So I'm hoping that that was a grasp of he understood. and. I understand what I got wrong on the exam, so <laughs> can I get an A for it anyway? <laughs> okay. Do we have do we have a motion or no motion? Agree, disagree? I'll make a motion to accept uh, I'll legal. Second that. <laughs> we have a motion to accept council's recommendation by Commissioner Johnson, seconded by Commissioner McCara. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? Recommendation approved. Number three is two zero one six zero two 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 three one, and these are all new from here on out. So I'll give you time to read and just let me know when you're ready.
I had a chance to read through the case. Council recommends the authorization of a civil penalty in the amount of $2,500 to be satisfied within 30 days of the execution of the consent order and a 30-day suspension of the respondent's certification. Such terms are to be settled by consent order or formal hearing. Board Council's recommendation. Uh, any questions? I'd like to discuss. I have some major concerns. Um, number one, why we're going with such a harsh penalty. I mean, I found a lot of errors in the report, and from the reviewer's report, you'll see that he pointed out a lot of mistakes that were made violating USPAP. In addition, I, I did take into um, consideration the respondent's um, history with the board. Did everybody have a chance to see the respondent's history? Yes. Okay. Um, my, am I mistaken? The last was seven years ago, 2009? 2009. Okay. Um, let me go at this from an appraisal practice perspective. The appraiser goes out, appraised the property, pulled comparable sales from a local market that the appraiser felt was correct. The customer was upset, called and said, hey, look at these in this better market. The appraiser took the high road, realized there might have been a mistake, made some adjustments, but also stood their ground and didn't lend in to lender pressure. As a result, the complaint was filed. Uh, under, so now we go back to data and scope of work. Um, not real sure how you would expand the scope of work unless you're talking about expanding your search area, because otherwise the scope of work seems to be the same. So there was an awful lot in here about scope of work. Um, under the original data set that's local, Basically, it doesn't appear that the appraiser felt like there was an adjustment between properties across the street and properties on the water. Uh, that's based on that data set. So where that comes into play is how it was reported as far as the view lakefront in the first report. So based on the data in the first report, I don't see that there's a problem. Go to the second report where she made the corrections, and there's been some changes because the data has changed. Um, I'm not sure that if this was a first-time offense, we wouldn't be given a letter of caution because I think the appraiser has done what we asked them to do, and that is take the high road and make corrections if you make a mistake, and at the same time, don't lend into blender pressure. And so while I understand there are some errors here, it looks to me like most of the errors tend to be with the first report versus the second, and if I'm not mistaken, each report is supposed to stand on its own. I don't think you go back and compare them. Um, I just, I think this is overkill and I would welcome any other comments and if I'm mistaken. Floor is open. But at the same time, it, maybe someone knew that. Maybe they're using that against them. I don't think something happened seven years ago should necessarily carry that much weight. I think the rest of the penalties go back to 2005. So we're looking, you know, well over 10 years on some of these disciplinary hearing, I mean, disciplinary actions. And three of them are letters of warning, which means they weren't that severe. Let me ask you this, Commissioner, do you believe that the, there is some kind of penalty that ought to be imposed in this case? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that there's, there's something to do with the first decision to not, I guess the point would be this, logically there should have been a difference. Most buyers and sellers would think there's a difference between having Lake. I do think there's some mistakes. I don't think it's a career ending or career affecting decision, and this penalty in effect is very harsh and almost does that. This this penalty this this is just strictly a council recommendation. Right. It's it, it doesn't mean you have to. It can easily be modified or adopted. So if you have if you have a a different well uh, recommendation, my, I would put it out on the table. I guess what I'm doing is defending my reason mm -hmm. for lowering the penalty. 
I understand that. And, and, and Commissioner Tankersley, would you think that either of those, with not both, but either the the the, uh, the, the fine? Fine would be appropriate, but not that much. And I think the suspension goes way too far. Of an alternative you would like? To I, I, you know, I would actually like to do something a lot less, and I'd like to add some more education involved because I think this is a this is more of a uh, it's definitely not an ethics issue because ethically the appraiser stood up to the test. So this is more of a um, decision making judgment thing. So I think some education would help. Um, some type of sales comparison analysis or identifying, I know we've given that seven or eight years ago, but it's been a while, um, something like that. And then do a, a because we're going to add that, that's going to be a financial burden, we lower the penalty significantly. So um, I would suggest maybe $500 and then a 30-hour um, course, an advanced, some type of advanced residential. Something in the past, but I think that's more where we need to go with this. So is that a motion? I make a motion. I'll second. Motion on the floor and a second by Commissioner McCara for a $500 penalty and a 30-hour course uh, of some type of advanced application or sales comparison approach. Absolutely. Any discussion? Ever signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, motion approved. Number four. Can you outline the course work one more time? Uh, some type of advanced residential. 30 hours um, with a test. I would, I would say once you locate those or identify those courses, perhaps contact Mr. Tankersley and let him look at them and see if that's what he was uh, thinking of when he made that recommendation. Is that fair enough? Okay. I guess the other thing I would like to add is if it's two advanced courses of 15 hours, I'm okay with that too. Okay. So, because I know 30 hour courses are hard to find sometimes. Okay, number four, two zero one six zero two nine three zero one. I had an opportunity to read the case. Council recommends the authorization of a letter of instruction regarding the above referenced use PAP violations.
Council Second. recommendation sec, uh, by Commissioner Tankersley, seconded by Commissioner Garrison on a letter of instruction regarding the use of violations. Any discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Recommendation approved. Item five. Two zero one six zero three zero eight zero one. I had an opportunity to read the case. Uh, yes. 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 Well done. Yes, sir. <laughs> Good. I'd like to suggest we approve this. <laughs> All right, Commissioner Hall, make a motion to approve council's recommendation. I'll second. Second. Seconded by Commissioner McCara. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, item dismissed. Thank you. Thank you. Number six, two zero one six zero two nine four six one. I had an opportunity to read the case. 
Council recommends the authorization of a civil penalty in the amount of $500 to be satisfied within 30 days of the execution of the consent order. Such terms are to be settled by consent order or formal hearing. I have a question <clears throat> on, on a uh, civil penalty. Is that considered disciplinary action? Yes. Okay, so unlike, unlike a letter of instruction or a letter of warning, right. those are not disciplinary actions and do not have to be reported as such on your errors and omissions insurance. However, a, a civil penalty is a disciplinary action that would have to be reported. It would have to be reported, and it would also be up on our website on the disciplinary action report. I, I did, this is just personal. When I read her the response here, you know, I think she makes a good point. She knew she made she made a mistake. She corrected it, and she moved on. And 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 the reviewer is going to penalize, you know, punish her, and that's going to travel with her for a long time on her E and O. I just think that's a little too harsh, personally. You think a course would be uh, appropriate? I don't think. I, I, I think a letter of instruction saying, look. I don't think a course, I mean, she knew she made a mistake, she fixed it. I don't know that, I don't see this per, This person is intentionally trying to harm the public interest by any, I don't see that. I mean, I don't think it needs to be dismissed, but I, I, don't, I don't think she needs to be penalized for a long time over something that packs her insurance and those kind of things. I would say either a letter of instruction or a letter of warning, something that that doesn't carry with them the disciplinary aspect. That's just me personally. Simply because I don't think we want to set a precedent that appraisers shouldn't be correct in their own errors and that they're going to get penalized. It kind of goes back to the other one we discussed. Um, this appraiser took the high road and did what they were supposed to do. Um, Minor errors in the in the uh, the cost approach, um, I, but I. I just don't think this is that. Um, it's an error, but I don't think once again it should be that it, significant. It, it's even to the extent where, if you dismissed it, it wouldn't hurt my feelings. I mean, it's not that. It's not a big. It, I mean, because I think the response and the way it was handled was from a professional, it seemed to be, you know, somebody that was not malicious, and it was not, it was, you know, that, that's just my thinking, but I'm open for any motions. That we do a letter of instruction, I think that's the least. Uh, a second. I have a motion uh, from Commissioner Tankersley, seconded by Commissioner Garrison, for a letter of instruction. Any discussion? Not all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, recommendation approved. Now I will just do that letter of instruction based on the use PAP sections that the reviewer pointed out, unless you have. I mean, typically we just go through and say these are the things you need to watch out for and lay them out for them to review. Okay, number seven, two zero one six zero three five two five one.
I had an opportunity to read this case. Council recommends the authorization of a letter of instruction regarding SR 2-2A8 and record keeping rule line 319. Council's recommendation. Any discussion? Move that we accept Council's recommendation. Motion from Commissioner McCarra to accept Council's recommendation on Second. letter instruction, seconded by Commissioner Johnson. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, approved. <coughs> Item 8. Number 8 is 2016-041081. opportunity to read item seven <coughs> council recommends this matter be dismissed discussion if we accept motion council's to, recommendation motion to accept council's recommendation by commissioner garrison seconded <coughs> by Second. commissioner tankersley any discussion if not all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. Uh, item nine Everybody have opportunity to read item number nine. Council recommends this matter be dismissed. Motion. I move we accept council's recommendation. Second. Motion to accept by Commissioner Garrison, seconded by Commissioner Johnson. Any discussion? If not all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Item 10. Two zero one six zero four two six nine one.
Uh, everybody had an opportunity to read the case? My recommendation, I believe this is a violation of TCA 6239-326-4, and I recommend the authorization of a civil penalty in the amount of $1,000 to be satisfied within 30 days of execution of the consent order. Such terms are to be settled by a consent order or formal hearing. I can read that section for you. Section 326 is the section that gives you authority to revoke or suspend based on violations. And four is an action or omission involving dishonesty, fraud, or misrepresentation. I had a hard time with this one. I went back and forth. Um, I wanted you all to see the two cards so that you could make that de decision yourself if you feel like he altered or changed the card. Um, what is the Mississippi board doing with them? That is the other thing is that we don't know what they're doing. They are punishing him. So we could close this one and flag him for when Mississippi does tell us what they're going to do. And then we can. I would first think I would like to see what happens down there before we take action. But also notice that we've got pending formal hearing with him right now on another issue. So I'm not sure if we have a date set on that one or not. I remember we had a case years ago, and Commissioner Hall can probably remember this, where there was a Tennessee appraiser that had gotten in trouble for criminal activity in Florida. And um, he was going to, you know, face whatever penalties were involved there, although he still had his appraiser license here. And we could have revoked it or, or taken it away, but we decided to let that play out first before we took action. I was going to say we did. So I kind of think we did one a few months ago, where we're waiting on to hear what North Carolina comes back with. But that one's actually in the court system, so I don't know how this one's going to. We we don't know if Mississippi's doing anything. I'm sure they. Will. I'm sure they are because they are the ones that reached out to us. Okay. Um, but I mean, we can we can technically close this one and flag it, and then when we get something from Mississippi, I can bring it back to you. Now, let me ask you this: in in pending, say our formal hearing date is scheduled. And we go forward with that. And Mississippi has not come back with us with anything yet. Can we ask this individual about the Mississippi license? I do not believe that if we don't have a decision based on that, that we can bring that up. The only thing that I could see is if we made a decision today, they might be able to add the two together. But I don't know how far they are in the process with the other litigation. We could add the formal the charges that are pending against him now and then add this one on top of it so they would bring both of the issues in front of you at one time or they can I'm just trying to I'm just thinking if we can't talk about the Mississippi issue in a formal hearing perhaps you know we might have the information by the time it happens. and you may have it but at but that time this will be completely anonymous to you still so you won't even be able to connect the dots to yeah. I mean the only way a litigator could bring this in is if he open the door on the stand and somehow brought this up. Is there a way that we could make a motion to to hold up on acting on this until we hear from Mississippi, yet still have it being able to tie to this other case if it were to occur? I don't know. That sounds... That's yeah. I mean, the only thing I could suggest is that we could keep it open based on litigation monitoring even though it's not in litigation in Mississippi yet, and that would kind of give us the leeway to watch for something to come up. Yeah, or if we send a, have you sent a response back to him or her? Um, yeah, I actually sent, they sent it out to him, and, I mean, he responded and essentially said that that's not what occurred. Ms. Matthews, would it be possible to postpone the, uh, the hearing that we have, or would it be beneficial to do that? Um, I don't know, actually. I would have to reach out to the litigator. I believe it's Adrian to see where they are in that process, if he's spoken to the respondent um, and if they have a date set. I mean, for all I know, it could be at our next meeting oh, yeah. that you're supposed to hear this case, or mm -hmm. it could be six months from now. Well, that's um, what I'm wondering. Do we have the information that we need in order to be able to make a decision at that hearing? That's, I'm, un, I'm actually unsure on that one. Um, I have no problem reaching out to the Mississippi board today and seeing where they're at. 
with this case. Um, I don't, I'm just, what do you think? What do you guys think, ladies? Well, it sounds like we're, we're kind of going into this with our hands tied if we don't have all the information. Does some of that information depend upon what happens in Mississippi? I would say in the formal charges that are currently pending, we have all the information we need to make that decision. Okay. I mean, I've reviewed that case file. I think we'll be fine on that one. Um, the issue we're going to have going forward on this is that if we do give him a civil penalty, he may fight this one as well. And if that happens... Here's, here's the converse side of that. As we talked about a couple of cases earlier ago, some of them had an extensive history. But their history went back to 2007 and prior. We've got a history here going from 213, 215, another one. I mean, we've got – it's not like this happened a long time ago. And I feel like it, I'd like to be able to have all the things in the arsenal that we could use once we get to the formal hearing the first time out of the shoot, if we could do that in a way – I don't know, keep the door open. I mean, at least where we can bring it in some way. Right. And I mean, I don't, I don't know how you do that. That's that's a. And I don't know what the what the civil penalty was for the last one that he didn't sign the consent order on. Um, my suggestion, even though I did say a thousand dollars, my recommendation would be at this point is on this matter that we leave it up to like a litigation monitoring and wait to see what Mississippi does. And then that gives us the opportunity. I can figure out where our other case is and how fast it's moving, if it's going to be heard at the next meeting or two meetings from now. Would there be a possibility, because I know we've done this in the past, in the event it moves fast or something, and you say, we need to take action on this to get a, to tie them together, rather than having everyone drive in, we have done we telemeetings can. before where we could have one meeting, deal with this one issue, conference call it and then move on if this is so bad to where we think that we need to call you together for a you know emergency meeting summary suspension something um we can do that all over the phone i think we did one last week for another board so it's so all possible we, so do we want to would would the recommendation be to place this on litigation monitoring is that what you're i would say place it on litigation monitoring pending the outcome of the mississippi boards that's good counsel your, do you agree with what she just said? Yeah, I move that we, we okay, accept that. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, approved. Item 11. Number 11 is had an opportunity to review the case okay recommendation council recommends the authorization of a letter of warning in regards to the above reference use PAP violations for council's recommendation any discussion
Approved. Commissioner Second. Tankersley, seconded by Commissioner Garrison. All in favor, signify. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, recommendation approved. And that concludes legal reports. Has any questions? We are ready for new business. Point. We've got nothing new to add. I do have everyone's pictures that were taken for your parking passes. So uh, if the chair is uh, good to adjourn, I'll we'll end the meeting and I'll make sure to distribute those so that the next time around everyone can use their cards and get in and out of parking easier. Okay, quick question. Yes. Does that card, is it, do we just hold it up in front of that thing? I believe so. The gates are not there yet. <laughs> so it's new. To, <laughs> we don't know on our vehicles we've got a card that's still hanging. But I believe that that's how it should work. You okay. don't have to put the little now, red they, things. No, no more on the windowsill. Does, does it only work here? Does it, it work at all of any particular parking? I believe it's just going to be here. But it's also a card to get in and out of the building, I think. So oh, that's so, its goal. So we won't have to sign in in the that, future? That's we can the just hope. put the card up there? Right. Cool. Thank you. That'll be so great. Much. Yes. Progress. Yes. <laughs> that's it. Okay. Um, so it's, uh, we're um, ready to adjourn. Since there's no further business, we'll the meeting adjourn. stands adjourned. Thank you.